Welcome and thanks for watching. This is how to use the insert statement in SQL uh, to create new data. We're going to be using the Northwinds database, so I'll execute that. Uh, if you're new, you might want to go back and look at the select statement and various ways of using the select statement before you start doing data modifying commands like insert, update, and delete. And uh, as a public service announcement here, just uh, keep in mind that insert, update, and delete are data modifying commands that do set at a time operations. Uh, they're very powerful and the upshot of this is that you can change millions of records with one simple command. Uh, the database engine will not say are you sure? Database engine will not give you an undo option. Right? Uh, undo is, a, is reapply a backup. So you have to treat these with quite a bit more respect than you would the select statement. So let's get started. Um, the insert statement creates entire rows in a table that already exists. The table has to be there and now you can put rows into it. Uh, the form of that table has to be maintained so it's always rectangular. It always ha Every row has the same number of columns. Every column has the same number of rows. You can't insert half a row. You can't insert a new value into a row. Uh, you'd use update, uh, the update command for that. But let's look at the orders table and see what we have. Uh, so here's some orders, order ID, customer ID, etc. Any different columns. And I'm just showing you this so you see that nothing's up my sleeve. That's the state of the table right now. And notice I'm doing order ID descending. The highest order ID is at the top. So here's a basic insert statement into the orders table where I'm supplying the ship city and the customer ID. So here in the table, there's the ship city, there's the customer ID. Notice that I'm doing it in the different order than they actually appear in the table, which is fine. So let me go ahead and execute that. And the message I get back is kind of innocuous. It just says one row affected, meaning that there was a row was inserted. So let's make sure it worked. Again, nothing up my sleeves here. And there it is. There's this row of a new order ID, customer ID, a bunch of null values, freight of zero, ship city of Akron, and everything else null. So notice that it created an entire new row even though I only specified two fields for uh, the insert statement. Most of the fields got a null value because I didn't specify a value, but a couple of them were different. So order ID got, some, got a non-null value, got a value, something, even though I didn't specify it. And freight got a value instead of being null also. So to figure out why, let's go look at the create statement for that table. This is basically the table definition here. And notice that this is the important one, this part right here. And the other thing that's different about the freight, freight field is there's a constraint on it for a default value. Right? Or rather, the important part is the default value. So let's talk about that. <clears throat> For identity, an identity field means that the database engine is going to provide a unique value for this field. The 1, 1 specifies to begin with values at 1 and increment by 1 for each record. Once we specify a field as an identity, we cannot provide a value for the field anymore. The database engine will. So this is common to use for primary keys that just have to be unique and non-null. And uh, there's some performance reasons why identity is a good uh, way to go for primary keys. The default zero for freight means that if we don't provide a value for the freight, it will use zero as the default value. So in this case, when I did an insert that was very simple and I only provided a couple of fields, most of the fields became null, and we'll look at them. Most of the fields became null. The order ID got a value because it was an identity field, and the freight got a value because we had defined a default on that value. 
So the general form of the insert statement is like this. Insert into, you provide a table name, and then in parentheses, an ordered list of columns, and in parentheses, an ordered list of values that are in the same order as the column list. In other words, here's column one, column two, column three, and I provide the value that goes with column one, then the value that goes with column two, then the value that goes with column three. You don't have to have these in the same uh, order as they are in the table, um, but you do have to have the values aligning with the uh, columns. So here's a more complex one. I'm just going to open this up so we can see the f a full insert statement. And here I'm inserting into products uh, many fields. Notice that the product name is a variable character, so I'm specifying it as a string delimited by single quotes. Uh, these IDs are integers, so I have numbers without decimal points. Uh, quantity per unit, I'm just demonstrating how to supply a null value into a field. It's normally a character. This unit price is a money data type, and I'm uh, specifically putting a period in here so that I don't do an implicit conversion between 12, the integer, and $12, the mon monetary value. These are uh, integer valued. And then the last one, this is a bit field. And so the values you can use for a bit field are 0 or 1. So let's just go ahead and execute that. And what we'll see is that one row is affected. And then to show that new row, I can see there's my row, Bowser Biscuits, and discontinued zero so there are all the values again notice that product ID got a value even though I didn't specify one in my statement so let's go back and do a more full uh, example on orders so I can show how to specify dates so here I'm going to insert into orders supply a customer ID employee ID order date required date ship date and freight and I'll go ahead and execute this. Um, notice that customer ID is a string. Employee ID here is an integer. Get date is a function that will return the server's current uh, timestamp, in effect. So the order date is getting uh, as of the server time right now. And then for required date, I'm specifying that the customer needs this order at 5 p.m. on May 1st, 2016. So notice that it's YYYY, four characters for the year, four digits, two characters for the month, two characters for the day, uh, 5 p.m., so, uh, you know, in 24-hour uh, format. And uh, there's minutes, there's seconds, there's milliseconds. And notice that I supply null values for the last two to explicitly say we don't yet know what the ship date is and we don't yet know what the freight is. And then just to show um, there is the field, uh, there's the new record, and there is the server time, uh, March 18, 2016, at 10.45 a.m., uh, 21 seconds and 337 milliseconds. Again, the fields that I did not specify get null values. Now, what happens if I do the uh, insert statement incorrectly? So I'm going to give some uh, examples of that. Here I'm inserting into the orders table, and I get a cannot insert, so I'm providing the value 1 for order ID. And it's pretty specifically telling me that this is an identity column. I'm not allowed to provide a value for the identity column. So there's one error, and notice that uh, it, all it really did was not do the insert and give me a message. So I didn't really have to catch the error or do anything about it. The record just was not created, and I get a message. So in effect, I have zero records affected. 
So here I am going to insert the value Barney into the customer ID and I get this error that says uh, you can't use Barney because it would be truncated. So customer ID is an NCAR 5. In other words, I can only use five characters in there. Uh, otherwise, I would truncate it. And again, it just doesn't do the insert. So let me shorten that and use only five characters. And here I get another error. And this time it's not because of a data type uh, or a truncation. It's because this is a foreign key constraint. Barn is not a valid customer ID. It doesn't exist over in the customers table, so you can't use it. So this is uh, saving me from putting a bogus customer ID into the table. So in summary, insert creates entire rows, uh, not half rows, not partial rows. Um, you specify values according to their data type, so you have to know how to specify literal values like dates and strings. Various things could block an insert and in general these are your friends. You don't want to um, uh, eliminate these blocks. They're there to keep your data clean and of high quality. Uh, lastly, again, treat insert, update, and delete with respect. Uh, they're designed to be very powerful but you don't get the uh, safety nets that you sometimes get in a consumer product like Microsoft Access or Excel or Word. This is a database server. It's trying to do what you ask it to do as fast as possible and get on to its next business. So that's the insert statement for SQL. Thanks for watching.